All right, time once again for catching up with Tommy Mac Podcast here on 1010XL's podcast platform at 1010XL.com, on the 1010XL app, and on Facebook as well as we go live on 1010XL's Facebook and my own personal page, and then it's shared Everywhere. I mean, anywhere and everywhere you watch podcasts, listen to podcasts uh, on social media, all over the place. All the shows uh, that are done here, all the podcasts that are done here, whether it's Dan and Frank, whether it's Campo and Joe, whether it's Hacker doing his Gator stuff. I mean, there's a lot, a lot of content coming right out of these studios on the podcast side. And uh, it's great to be here as well. Part of the lineup with Catching Up with Tommy Mack, brought to you by Team Tommy Mack. I tell you what, it keeps growing, and I love representing these businesses all throughout Northeast Florida and beyond. Uh, I will; They will help you out. They will help you out, and that's why I endorse them. Chris Lucero's Bail Bonds, J-Dog Junk Removal and Hauling. Looking for veterans, by the way. Go to jdogjunkremoval.com. Azar Sausage, the best. We had, we had kebabs last night. Oh, my gosh. Chicken and sausage. Oh, it was it was quite quite the uh, tasty treat with a little rigatoni. You know what I'm saying? A little feta, a couple olives, uh, yeah, a little Mediterranean. I get it, but man, that sausage, nice and spicy. Get it in your local grocers. River Bend Ranch or Meat Fifty Five, as we're calling it, the Carpet Man <laughs> LVP. Carbon Man's LVP, lowest prices, highest quality, you know it, at the Carbon Man and my boys at Truck Accident Law Firm. That's a dream team. Any kind of truck accident, I'm talking buses, I'm talking semi-trailers, I'm talking monsters. You got to uh, get well represented by my friends at the Truck Accident Law Firm, and uh, great to have them on board. All right, let's welcome in Grammage, my uh, my young producer. No, well, he's young and wise. I mean, he's a pretty wise dude, knows the game as well, and uh, he loves talking ball almost as much as I do. Let's say hello to Grammage. Hey, Grammage. Good morning, sir. How, How are you doing? doing, dude? Fantastic. Good weekend? I do, I do love talking ball. That is, uh, I know you that's do. That's always true. It's uh, a great, great topic. Always. It was a good weekend. I, uh, I worked the uh, preseason game yep. against the Dolphins. I was actually on the Dolphins sideline. Oh, the nice. Entire, All uh, right. I was helping um, CBS Miami. I was helping them. Look at you, Jack the game of all trades. So I like so it. I like it. I was on their sideline. Um, Christian Kirk almost took out my ACL one time. Ooh. Which uh, Did you what, fall? Did you get knocked over? No, I almost did. Oh. I, I was able to get out of the way. It wasn't that. Okay, uh, just a quick, quick reaction. But if if, uh, if he had torn my ACL, I'd have been honored. Of, uh, of all, <laughs> <laughs> of I'm all, sure he would be honored that you're honored. Of all, of all people, uh, <laughs> yeah, it would have right. been great. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, I mean, it was a uh, really quick sidebar. It was kind of crazy to be on that sideline when uh, um, Daywood got injured. Yeah. Um, yeah. At the end of the game, and it was, yeah. it was crazy how, you know, you know how those injuries go, that the whole stadium goes silent. And, yeah. Uh, we were in the, the press conference, the Miami's press conference after the game, televising yep. it, and McDaniel, Mike McDaniel was, like, crying. Yeah. Uh, but but it seems like he's going to be okay, which is He is, yeah. He's, he's yeah. Got, all he's reports say he's, he's which, getting it all back. Yeah. You know, we can worry about football later as long right. as he, he's going to be okay, which, yep. which is great. Um, but anyway, it, it was it was kind of cool. I'm, I'm not usually on the sideline during a game, obviously, so it was, it was right. cool having a different perspective on the game and kind of seeing. Yep. You see – it's it's hard a lot of times to know to to really understand the speed of the NFL until you're right there, right on the field, no doubt. When you get to see from ten thousand feet, as we yep. as fans do, watching um, yep. on TV or or watching from the stands higher up, it doesn't feel as fast as it is. Yep. When you're right there and you see those hits a couple feet from you, and you yeah. see how quickly the QB has to make decisions, and you're like, wow. Yeah. Like, and the size. Fast, man. The size and speed size is, is just like, you're like, holy cow. Like, DBs look like giants, and you're like, oh. I and mean, they can fly, and they love hitting people. And, I would go in college. I, w- I went to Florida. I would yep. go um, do a bunch of stuff with, with practice, you know, pretty consistently getting interviews of our yep. coordinators and stuff like that. And that was SEC football. Yeah, and you know the, the, those are big boys. Oh yeah, yeah. the league is great. entirely different. Totally animal, different. Man. I thank the, you for league, saying that. This is SEC yeah. football. Like, I know it doesn't get bigger in college. I agree. The NFL dwarfs them. I agree. It's not even close. I, you know, and you, you always get those arguments. Could you know a top SEC Hell team no. beat the worst NFL team? You're like, no, Hell not, no, they wouldn't. They'd get they'd get they get worked over pretty good. They and look, they'll make some plays. Of course they would, but overall, it wouldn't. I don't think it would Physically, be pretty. You know this better than I do. Yeah. Man, 
Skill positions matter. Obviously, yep. the quarterback's most important position. All that stuff matters. Yep. But if you get dominated in the trenches, you will never win a football. No, game. definitely not. You will never. No, win your a football quarterback game will never get a ball off. You'll get Correct. stuffed. It's just not gonna, not gonna happen. Hey, before we move on with this show, and there's a lot to get into. Uh, just man, just been thinking about Jacksonville. You know, um, as a city. Uh, what's going on? Uh, this is a sports show, but we live here, man, and and it does affect me. You know, I mean, first of all, thoughts and prayers to the victims and their families in that Newtown shooting. Just sad, just sad. You got to give her to the hate. What do you hate people for? Like, give me a break. You know, you know. I told I told a story on Twitter, and I'm only going to share it. And and granted, look, football is a different bond. You you have a, a a serious brotherhood kind of bond. It doesn't matter what the other guy looks like, but it's a great lesson for everybody, right? So I'm I'm I'm, I'm hanging out on the beach Saturday. But my my kid, my wife and girl, my oldest daughter, going to the the game. I got the dad bods gig up in Amelia Island. I'll tell you how that ended, which was a great great uh great gig and we're standing there or sitting on the beach and here comes my man james stewart who looks unbelievable by the way he is so in shape he looks like a greek statue like i wrote on twitter I mean, he's walking down and that's how he that's what he does for cardio of course little man stewart and if, uh, look i've known james since 1995 we're boys man we've been around each other and friends for a long time and we used to hang out all the time on you know um in the weight room and even like he, he would always come out with us he would always be at my house he was just a just a great dude. Great dude. We've always been really good friends. And anyway, he comes down, I get up, we say hi. We hadn't seen each other in a, I don't know, probably a month or so. You know, give the old the old hug and uh, you know, just say talk. And I'm, I'm like, man, you look great. He's like, oh, so do you? I'm like, nah, man. He's like, hey, I watch you. You're living your best life. And that's great. Anyway, and we hug again. And as he's walking away, he looked like and, and by the way, of course, I said the girl said hi to him. My in-laws were there and or my mother-in-law, my wife, hey James, you know, all that stuff. So he knows pretty much all him anyway as he's walking away he goes you know you're like a brother to me and i said same bro and he goes i know and he just put his headset back on and started walking i was like damn right doesn't matter that nothing matters except the character that's all that matters and i wish we could get to that i know that's i don't want to get off on a tangent but i, I just pray for everybody man we shouldn't be hating over nothing so stupid, in my opinion. Everybody would benefit from some time in a locker room. Oh, I always, you know, I always say that the world would benefit if they were in a locker room. They would. All that matters is what? Can you play? You got to be able to play. I'm sorry. If you can't play, you, you're not going to be in the locker room. And then it's character. And that's it. It's talent and how you are. Now, you may be great talent, but a total jerk. And I'll love you for being my teammate, but I won't go hang out with you. But that, whatever. It's not based on anything but your attitude. And then the other side, right? Anyway, we, we you know where I'm getting at. Um, but uh, And also, stay safe. This storm, <laughs> I tell you, my wife, I, God bless you, meteorologists. I'm not bagging on you. But, man, it's like Emmy Award season. You know what I mean? And she's just like, oh, my God. I'm like, babe, just, just it's going to be okay. Yes, if we were on the west side, I would be totally thinking different. And I know the outside, everyone's going to come at me, but whatever. Just stay safe out there. Do what you got to do, and I'll do the same. No doubt about that. All right, final cuts today, um, and they're starting to trickle in. And, Graham, if you get a chance to just look at Twitter while we're on. They've been kind of side um, it. It's kind of, yeah, go. because you got to, you know, it's, this. look, this is a big day. I was telling my, my girls uh, before I took my oldest to the airport, we're just talking about cut day. And I just, I'm going to remind you real quick, 95. It's we played five preseason games. I was told the night before you had to have your best game if you're going to stick around in the morning, and I had a good game. And then I'm sitting there, and we're it's a, it's it's like getting near time where we take our helmets and go out and run hundreds. And I see the Turk, and I know I know who the Turk is, right? And he, uh, Ron Hill, good friend, a great great guy. And I just put my head down. I'm like, oh please, 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 <laughs> like don't don't tell me to go grab my playbook and see Coffin. And, and I literally see his feet stop in front of my my uh, my locker, and I just keep my head down. I'm like, oh gosh, here we go again. Because I'd been cut before. I know I know what this is like, and. He goes by me, and I didn't really realize t I made the team till I'm running hundreds out there on the field. And then even after, Cobb was like, "Yeah, you made the team, but don't don't settle, don't get don't get too settled. You gotta you gotta earn it uh, uh, every single day." So I, I I empathize with guys that get cut. I do. I'm not gonna sit here and, and look. You know, 
it's, I made a joke to my my daughter. I was like, you know, the guys that get cut, they go home and they go dominate their their town's intramural leagues. <laughs> they go, they go, they go kick everybody's ass in basketball or it pay, whatever. It, it pays about the same too. <laughs> it pays for that. <laughs> exactly, exactly. When but uh, nonetheless, sponsored right. by dude wipes is really uh, yeah, right. <laughs> really taking off. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. But I I do I do have empathy for all the guys throughout the national football. Anybody not making a team, it's tough, man. It's very, very tough. Ventral Miller will go on IR. Uh, tears his Achilles. Young guy tearing his Achilles, man. Just, just a shame of that. You heard about Nathan. R- and look, no real surprises. I know people were kind of questioning Nathan Wark, uh, Rourke and, and Jordan Smith, the other, uh, you know, defensive. You know, Jordan, Jordan Smith, I know he made a couple plays, but he just didn't. He just, he, I don't know. He didn't really stand out to me, even like practice and games. I know, like, his sack, it just didn't. I don't know. I don't feel like he's a natural bender around the corner. I I don't, and I and I think you you got to have that. I mean, you you look at Abdullah. He's he's got it. It's like no, you know what I mean. It's just Abdullah's a natural. Had a really impressive camp in preseason. It's just a really natural dip. You don't have to work at. You know, it's not like effort. It's effortless. I don't know. I never felt. I wish nothing but the best for the young man. I hope he catches on with somebody and continues to heal up. Nathan Rourke. I'm not surprised. Look, he he played. You know, he made some really good plays. Played well in the preseason games. Definitely a gamer. But as we all know, and I talked about before, being a backup QB is much more. Uh, than just p- performing well in preseason preseason games or just coming in, you gotta he, you gotta be the buffer man. You gotta be a, a good sounding block for your for your starter. I think he would benefit. He'll get picked up somewhere. I I think he would benefit. Gosh. If from, I'm them, I'm hoping he's my scout team. It, you know what I mean? Practice yeah. squad scout team. Like good. I, I'd love to develop him there, but I agree. I think he's he may get taken. And I think um, he would benefit going somewhere. Kind of Gardner Minshew ish, where the the starter's less established. Yep. But w- with a guy that the franchise is all in on, all the chips in on, yep. he's going to take every single significant snap, no matter what. He Trevor could have four bad games in a row. He's still the QB in a position like that. A guy like that doesn't necessarily. It, it, again, we, we've talked about it on this podcast. Yep. You need a more Beathard type guy. For... Fair or not, he doesn't have the experience to be a backup QB. Correct. And I'm not talking play on the field. I'm talking everything else that goes with it. Because the the most important role, if Trevor Lawrence is the starter, yeah. the most important role for a backup is how do you add value to Trevor Lawrence? Yeah. right. It's less about who are you as a football player. Yeah. And I don't think Beathard's a bad football well, player. Well, and you got to know the system, you know, that. You got to they got to be comfortable with you knowing the system and all that. So that that's a big part of it. It's also being uh reports trickling out uh Garrett Prince is expected to be released the tight end uh who we we were talking had had great look great in practice, but I I don't think I ever saw him a, really do much in a game. Maybe it's, a little bit early, but isn't it kind of faded? Isn't it weird how that happens? How you'll watch practice. Yeah. You'll see a certain guy make a ton of plays. And you're like, man, this guy's all over the field. You're this guy, this practice. guy's looking awesome. And then a preseason game will come. Yep. And somebody else who you maybe forgot about is making Luke Farrell's all over the place. Right. On yep. uh Saturday night against the Dolphins. Yep. Good blocker too. Big kid that can block and not afraid. And you're gonna that, need him. You're gonna need him. I think they Made a pretty clear statement with waving Prince and keeping yep. Fair. And now yep. I think Farrell was going to make the team regardless. I do too. Yeah, um, I think he'll get picked up. But I think they made a pretty clear statement of, okay, Farrell is my new man. Hurts, yep. and then with Brenton Strange and Evan Ingram, I don't. I, I got don't my need pass anymore. catchers, yeah. and Farrell's right. not a terrible pass catcher. He, no, I mean, right. He can he can, he can definitely get on open. Saturday. He can catch yeah. a couple of balls. He can. And, totally. You know, he's not he's not Travis Kelsey, but right. He, Oh, catch some passes, well, move the and, six. And as we know, you know, you, you've got to measure, like, do I need more O-linemen? I've gotten injuries on the O-line. You know, i I got to take the risk. And we're sitting there going, why do you let them go? But well, they're hoping that nobody grabs them, but they know the reality is somebody's going to grab uh, Garrett Prince. Right, Jacob Harris also being reported. Uh, and, and, and the guys from uh, the TU, Demetrius Harvey, uh, Marcel Robinson, I think I've seen the guys on Twitter, John Sh- I think Shipley's starting to – trickle man but i know demetrius harvey's been i follow these guys they give me great i love twitter twitter i you know i don't have to go anywhere else with twitter to get my jags or any other kind of information at least for what i'm i'm looking for speaking uh jake of, compares another guy what's that sorry speaking of twitter yep. um 
Can I read you a, a tweet I thought was interesting from Mark Long? Yes, the AP uh, writer. Yeah, yeah, sure. It's, it's he not covers the Jags. It's not a newsbreaker, but it just goes yep. along with some stuff we're saying in yeah. terms of how they're going to manage the roster. Jaguars likely going light at two positions to get Devon Hamilton and Cooper Hodges to short-term IR. Okay. Expect them to have two roster spots open to bring those two guys Okay. Back. Good. Good for, hey, good Devon for Cooper Hamilton, Hodges. Devon Hamilton, you would have expected that. Oh, with Cooper doubt. Hodges, is, there's a little bit of news in there. Yep. I think they really liked Cooper Hodges for good reason. I agree. He had a really good camp. Totally played agree. Played well in the preseason yep. games. Yep. And, you know, it's... With those guys, those back end draft and then undrafted guys, so many times it's so final. You know, if they get any kind of injury, they're probably done. Yep. But if he had such a good camp and he's only going to be out for a couple of weeks and you really liked what you saw, why wouldn't you do that? I agree. No, you absolutely. Know? Smart so, move. I, look, Cooper I Hodges really smart move. came in big enough. Nasty as all get out and really athletic. I mean, talk about – and you can sit there and be like, well, why wasn't he at a, a, a bigger school? Let me tell you a quick story. Tommy Nalen. Remember Tommy Nalen played center for the Broncos 13 years. He was a year behind me at Boston College as a center. One of the best centers ever out of BC and played an incredibly long time. Go ask John Elway about Tommy Nalen. Go ask Mark Schlereth about Tommy Nalen. One of the best to, to play the position without a doubt. When he came to Boston College as a freshman, 220 pounds. 220 as a center. You're like, What? He st- I think when he started, he was like 240 and then just got That's bigger crazy. and bigger and bigger and bigger and then finally came into his own and probably played at 280, you know, 6'4", 280, big enough, strong enough, and technician, great, he had great strength. Once he grabbed you, you couldn't get, his, couldn't get him off you, man. It was such a pain. I used to fight him in, in practice. He used to drive me nuts. He was so good. But that's my point. Yeah. You don't know when these guys hit their stride. Remember... And- Go Sorry, go ahead. I was uh, just going to finish with Cooper Hodges. I don't care where you, that, that's a great thing about the NFL. Doesn't matter where you're drafted. None of that matters. If you could come in and show that you can hang, that you got the athleticism, that you're big enough, you're strong enough. You don't have to be the biggest, strongest, fast, all that, but you got to be enough of all that. And you can play the game and you got some tenacity. You got a shot at making a team. They don't care where you came from. They don't care if you, you're better, if you come out of App State and you're going against a third round pick out of Auburn. If you're better than him, they don't care. They're like, listen, this kid's better. I, he, I can't let him go. And and Cooper Hodges has proven he's that kind of player, at least till now, up until this date. Remember uh, Ali Marpet? Yeah, yeah. From the Bucks. From the Bucks, yeah. Hey, he he retired. Yeah, uh, yeah last, last year, year, I think. Yeah, uh, but he had a great career. He he was a fantastic lineman for their Super Bowl team, no doubt. And he was really really good for them. He went to I forgot Small what it was, Penn or something like Hobart that. Hobart and William Smith College. Oh geez, I just gave him pens. Yeah, I gave him a little uptick. He was, wow. I, I think he. I think that's Division Two. It sounds like it. Such a shame. Ryan Jensen's hurt. Not going to play for the Bucks. He's, yeah, no, man, that sucks. But that but suck. just to your point, I mean Antonio Brown. I know he, he's gone crazy, yeah. but he was one of the best play, one of the best receivers yep. ever ever in the league. And yep. he went to Central Michigan. Yeah, or somewhere small. Dude, no, there, it doesn't matter. That's my whole tons point. Tons of small. Yeah, oh, where they went to school. Point. I mean, yep. yes, if you went to an SEC school and you delivered the goods. Yep. The the math favors you to be a good NFL player, of course. Yep. But that does not mean that you can't find good talent from no, anywhere in college. No, find you anywhere. So don't worry about where you start. It's where you finish. Especially in today's world. Even if you go JUCO, don't worry about it. They'll find you. Especially it's like in, the last of the yeah. Mohicans. Remember when he's saying to the <laughs> to Madeline Stowe, he's like, I will find you. <laughs> Same thing. Especially in today's world. Today's world is the best world ever to get noticed oh, at a smaller video, level. Yeah. Yeah. Because football, going all the way down to high school, football does not get played without being filmed anymore. Right. It does not get played. No, right. Uh, you, you will not have a game that you can play in, in any level of college, any level of high school, where you can't get tape out there. You're right. It will not exist. If you can't get tape out there, that's a you problem. That's right. You know, it's not like... 20, 30 years ago where you, you might be playing games and people are just never going to get to see you make yeah. plays. My coaches in high school, I loved them all. They they uh, sent out 300 letters on my behalf. Think about it, Like 300. Pony Express, 300 wow. letters. Wow. Yep. That's crazy. Isn't that great? They were awesome. That's awesome. Now, that 
today you don't do that today. But you're right. They they'll they'll find you, no doubt about it. I did read Josina Anderson reported, and I hope I don't think I read it wrong, but they're having in Jags are having internal discussions about Parker Washington and his value. I saw that too. You know, I look, I and and again, I don't I don't have anything against the young man, and I think he will play in the National Football League. But let if he if he didn't return, just Hang in there for a second. If he wasn't a returner, is he your fifth best? I don't think he is. I don't think so either. And, and that's no – look, he's another Kirk, but Kirk's way better, way shiftier, way quicker, faster. Parker doesn't have deep speed. We saw it. They they tried to send him down the field. He, it wasn't any problem for the DB to cover him. Now, again, I think he, he could be a, a player, but do we need him? You know what I mean? Agnew's our return guy. Now, granted, Agnew, and I was corrected on Twitter, thank you, um, he did. He has missed games in the past, right? Um, but I, is how important it is to have your backup punt returner, kick returner, when other guys can do it. You know, they can. I mean, Clay Brooks, whether you like him or not, whether he makes, you know what I mean? Like other guys, if they got a fair catch, Kirk could probably return kicks. Kirk could catch it, you know, call fair catch. What in the past, you. last year, Agnew was banged up. Not that much, but only a game or two. They had Kirk field the Yeah, punts. Kirk came in and field the I think they told him, you don't really ever need to return it, just fair catch yeah, it, but just we just catch need to, to catch the ball. Secure the ball. And he did every time. So I I don't know. I, I tweeted out there the uh, two days ago yesterday, my six for wide receivers, okay, is of course the four, Ridley, Kirk, Zay, and Agnew. And then I'm going Elijah Cooks and Seth Williams. First of all, and I like Tim Jones. I think Tim's fine. And but you know this whole special teams talk. These guys are athletic enough to play special teams. And 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 no disrespect to all the special teams players out there. What do you got to have? You got to have two things to play special teams: athleticism and attitude. And that's it. You don't have to be any dynamic special. This blah blah. I know they call it special teams, but it's not that special. You just got to be athletic. You got to be able to block in open space. You got to be running open space. You got to be able to tackle that kind of stuff. Well, why is why is Chris Claybrooks such a good gunner? He's really fast. Yeah, and he likes to hit people. And he likes to get after. It's a good I mean, challenge like, for him, right? You, you, you're absolutely right. He, like people always like to say that Chris Claybrooks is such this great gunner. Well, why is that? Right. He's really fast, and he hits people. Yeah, and he's he's a good tackler. He Absolutely. struggled in coverage from time to time, and that, okay. that's why he's not he higher up. I agree, but he can tackle. He's never had, as far as I can recall, I don't know of an issue he's ever had tackling. Yeah. He tackles people. Now, here's an idea: Can you name, you know, like I said, I think last week, could Parker be your returner, and Agnew's one of your six receivers, and you still may start Agnew as your returner, but just designate, just designate, or yeah. what, whatever, do or vice versa, what have you. But I tell you what, I, I I said it again. I am not letting Elijah Cooks walk out that door. I would not. And I know you'd say, well, we're not going to need him. I say, well, look, look, just just hear me out on this, because you know how Doug probably thinks out there. Throw me Ridley, throw me Jones, throw me Kirk, and you know what? Instead of Agnew, I'm going to throw Cooks out there on a linebacker, safety, or a nickel. And guess what he's going to do? He's going to toast the you-know-what out of them, and they're not going to know what to do. You're not going to be able to cover all this speed. And what he brings that's different is the size and speed, right? So it's not just speed, not just route ability, not just being able to catch the ball. It's that size differential. To me, I would not let that kid walk out the door. And for Seth Williams, why do I like him? Again, you may not need him a ton. I get that. But, you know, in the red zone, you know, throw me four out there and put him in the slot. Let him work one-on-one. Let him go over the middle and make those real tough catches. He's got the size to do that. You can you can use that. You can utilize him in that. Um, I'm not saying a ton. But I don't think the special the, – the other guys that are being considered, I don't think they're that much – better special teamers than what these guys are. I agree. I don't think it's that much difference, but on the field, that's where, to me, the difference is. No disrespect to Tim Jones or Parker, but we have four guys th- that are better better than that. They're like that, or similar to like that. Again, I think Tim Jones can play in this league. There's no doubt. I think Parker Washington can too, but from what I've seen in camp and on game day, 
I want something different, and I want that size and speed, and I want that that guy that makes the really tough catches. And we've been <clears throat> you know, th- this this conversation dates back to last week. You, you brought it up for the first time. I, I hadn't really heard anybody kind of talk. You were on this before those rumblings started about. Yeah. Parker Washington's not really standing out anyway. He's not really impressing me. And I haven't thought about it until then. I was just sort of assumed he's got a roster. But, but you were right. There was nothing. And, you know, he was a draft pick, but it's not like he was a second-round draft no, pick. No, sixth he's round, right? Later guy. Yeah. And you you made a good point about the return thing and designating, kind of just listing him on the roster differently. My problem is, man, if he had, like, returned a punt for a touchdown or something or – had a couple of big returns where he yeah. got. He had a couple nice returns. But I mean, there was not, nothing. I know he fair crazy. catched a lot. I, I I thought he would have grabbed a couple of those to show what he could do. Hey, excuse my ignorance if I'm way off on this, but is did he do anything that you think Chris Claybrooks couldn't have done? Yeah. As far as a maybe, returner or anything, maybe a that, little bit better, but no, I I but nothing pretty cra- close. No, nothing. Agnew jumps off the page as a returner, and uh, that's not agreed. a fair comparison because he's the best return in the league. Right. But like you know what I'm saying, I like. Do. Is it enough? If I'm going to designate you and give you a, a roster spot on my 53 because of return abilities, and you're not even my starter, yeah. I be, first of all, I better know you're never going to drop a single punt or, or kick, which he he didn't drop any, so that's yep. good. But you better be showing me something, man. You better I agree. be. I agree on these, especially on punts, because yep. I feel like punts are really where you can do a lot of because yep. kit. The league is almost taking kick returns out of the game. He is quick. He is. And but, he does get north-south, but I don't think he's as dynamic as everybody was. Uh, throughout camp, they were like, oh, he's really dynamic. And I'd be like, man, I, don't, I, I, I look at Kirk as dynamic. Like, Kirk can do a lot for you. And it's not fair for, to compare, but they are. that's where he'd be playing. He's not, Parker Washington's not outside. He doesn't have deep speed. He ain't beating anyone down the field. You got to get him one on one and on that linebacker or safety. But we have that in Kirk, and Kirk's a lot quicker and more dependable. And but again, I, I we'll we'll see what happens. But I hear you know from Josine. I I saw that on Twitter that they were having some rumblings about or conversations. So some people are on them or like yes, maybe some are like eh, I don't know. Like the question is again, do we need him? What do you need him for? And I think, uh, if he's that, but did, I'm sorry. If he's no, that right. dynamic, though, you would say, "Yeah, I need him." I'd say it. I'd be like, "Yeah, I want." Yeah, of course. That kid was like a little bit faster, a little bit more explosive, just a little bit, you know, deep speed. I'd be like, "Yeah, this kid's great," but I, I don't, I don't see that out of him. And you know, you know this better than I do because you lived it so many years trying to make roster spots and stuff. Yep. The politics of the league always come into play here. Yep. All right, if, are you the GM's guy? Are you not the GM's Correct. guy? That, that type of stuff always makes a difference. Yep. But again, he was a draft pick, but he was a sixth-round draft pick. Yep. You, you can cut a sixth-round draft pick and it All not day be long. catastrophic. All day long. You know, it's, yep. it's, not, a, it's not like it's a third round. It's no. not like it's Tank Bigsby we're talking about here. No, right? but it is probably a couple hundred grand. It is, of course. You know, so it's not like But nothing. that's not going to make no. or break the football You don't team, want too right? many of them, though, right? Correct, correct. Yeah. Um. So I do think that he is a late enough draft pick where we have to ask ourselves, and I think it's a totally fair question. Let's flip this. Say that Elijah Cooks was the sixth round pick coming in this year, and Parker Washington was undrafted, right. was an undrafted guy. No, they'd be raving about Elijah Cooks. It wouldn't Cooks. even be a conversation. They would be raving. Right. And I know. Parker I know. Washington probably would have already been waived. Right. No, you're right. You're it wouldn't right. even be a conversation. Yeah, true. So... Are we going to let the politics of a sixth round draft? There should be no politics in that I compared agree, to a free agent rookie. You know? Correct. Yeah. Exactly. I don't I, think so. I, I would say it probably, it's probably sixth round and on, or maybe fifth round and on. Yeah. Fifth, you start to get a little dicey yeah, there. Yeah, you don't like, want to lose too many fifth rounders. You but, want to find gems right. in the but fifth round. You understand what I'm saying? I though. do. It's like, He's not that different from an undrafted guy, but I feel like he's getting treated like he is in terms of right. roster spot. And again, this is not a dump on Parker Washington thing. I no, think he showed no. he showed good stuff. Absolutely. But those other guys really popped, man. Right. They right. really made well. Let's plays. so here and they're having these conversations. They're sitting there going, okay, and maybe it is. It's even with Seth Williams and Elijah Cooks in this thing. Like, look at Eric Hallett. Look at the DB. Kids made plays, right? 
I mean, he, has he earned a spot? And and if he can run down on special teams, and if he's athletic and a great attitude, he can. I know he can. You know what I mean? Like that. If you can just compare those two, who pops out more? I think Eric Hallett does. He's made more plays. I it can only go by what you see. And those cuts, you got to go somewhere. If you keep one more DB, that means you're shaving off a receiver or shaving off something else or whatever. So right, right. And they're going to keep four back, four running backs. I think. So that's you're not getting you're not gaining a roster spot there is my point. By the way, so, Tank, I love you, Tank. Tank's going to be a great pro. But now this is twice. Now you get stoned on a short yardage in the first game. I didn't like it, and then you get drilled at the goal line and you fumble. I think you're a great player, but you bleh, no. What are you doing? No. That cannot happen. And I know everyone's like, ah, he gets it out of his system now. <laughs> Whatever. I hope so, too. But I'm not giving him the benefit of the doubt. Just don't do it. Stop doing that and run people over. You're a big, big enough guy. And he is going to be great. Don't get me wrong. I'm not bagging on, on Tank think Bigsby. About when, but, hey, man, don't drop the ball. I don't care who hits you. I mean, think about when Travis Etienne. Remember when Travis Etienne fumbled yeah. uh, in the Houston game? On like right. the three yard, that was right. They would have won that game probably right. without that fun. That was a devastating you fumble. You can't, you can't turn the ball. Dude, over. I mean, you can't turn the ball overall. No. But especially if you're a back and you've got a touchdown, yep. basically waiting. Yep. But that, that I think that's a lesson though for a lot of young backs too. Is like if if you can protect the ball and it might mean you get tackled a yard short. Yep. But I get to keep my offense on the field yeah. and and get more plays yeah. to score. Yeah. It's worth it, man. If you if you got to put that extra hand on the ball just to make sure, without a doubt, dude, do it. Without a ETN doubt. got a little better at that later in the year because he he was having fumbling issues. Yep, and he got a little better, a little better, a little better. Yep. Um, hopefully tank gotta hold that point, baby. Hopefully tank's learning curve started quicker. Like yeah. we talked about. Yeah, get, yeah dude, right, I hope though. he you got it out of his that, system, man. but he better because he's gonna get goal line carries. No doubt, no doubt. So you better protect. And it was that a good rock, hit. Dude. It was, but. You know, I don't care if it's the best hit in the world. You better hold on to that I damn know. ball. And then you people, oh, Quarterman knocked it out of Derrick Henry. And I agree. I get that, but that was a bad fumble for him too. He got to hold on. Yeah, to dude. The, I mean, hold on to the damn ball. Period. Right. A fumble's a fumble, dude. I don't yep. care if Emmett Smith fumbled. It's it's a fumble. Uh, first team offense looked good. First team defense looked good. <laughs> Uh, ben Barch, good to see out there. Looks like he's healthy, ready to go. Of course, uh, Walker Little. Uh, did not participate, has a groin, but looks like he's going to be okay starting uh, the uh, opening week. Cam uh, played very well. I, I wonder, and I, and I threw this out there um, on Twitter with a poll, but they've got somebody, I've got to think that, just say one team, I think it's probably more, has called Trent Balky and asked about Cam Robinson. And just, you know, I mean, think about it. He he is a very good left tackle. There's no doubt about it. And before Cam got hurt last year, he was our best offensive lineman, in my opinion, our best tackle anyway. And I, I really like Cam Robinson. I think he's, he, he's somebody I would want on my team. Now, I say that with, well, what if, what if Walker Little is better? What if? Do you need Cam? Back to the need again. The, you know, this is part of it. It's not wants. It's also needs. And then the, and then keeping the health of my roster, the health of my salary cap, all of that goes into play, right? My locker room. But you, ha- I would have to imagine at least one team has called and said, hey, any chance – you would maybe let Cam go after you know after his suspension, or we'll do it now and then we'll we'll take him. You know, they, uh, who just did a trade for a guy that's gone for the year? The DB that was uh, caught what gambling or something? Isaiah, somebody, somebody just picked him up. Detroit pick him up uh, from the Colts. From the Colts, yeah, yeah. Somebody just picked him up, like traded for him. I forgot his name, but I knew. Yeah, about. yeah. It's, and he's gone for the yeah. year. Oh, Philly, Philly. It was Howie, Howie Roseman did yeah. it, I think. Kind of taking a playbook out of Trent Balky from last year, so from it can Ridley, be done. Yeah. Uh, with Ridley, if you so could I, Google prime trade deadline candidate, a picture of Cam Robinson's face would show up. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, you get rid of the, at all. you get rid of the money, you send him off with saying, "Hey, man, loved you as a Jag. You'll always be a Jag, but you got a new home and you're going to do great." You know, he'll make his contract. It's not like you, you know what I mean? Like, it, now I say that with you got to be really confident. Walker Little is the guy. 
Well, you've got you had all a camp. Got to be really confident that he's the guy because you don't want to. I'm sorry to cut. Just hang on for a second. Josh Wells is a nice swing tackle when healthy. Why? Because he's good enough to hold down the fort for you. Uh, but he doesn't cost fifteen million a year or whatever Cam's being paid. So you factor that in, right? I want my swing tackle to be like you know better than minimum salary, but he's not making what the starters make, right? He's nowhere near that that kind of number. Um, you don't want Cam. You know, I mean, what if Barch is great? What if, what if Little and Barch are great and you don't need Cam? Are you just gonna sit him there? Hey, you could. I get you know. I don't know. And I, I all I'm saying is this. I will not be shocked. I haven't heard nothing. I don't I don't do that. I don't I don't do that. I don't I don't I don't need this scoop. It doesn't doesn't matter to me if I get the scoop or not. Um and I've got a little scoop, but I'm not gonna share it, but does it's real little, so not that big of a deal. But I think they are having conversations internally about moving camp. That that would I I, I got if if they truly believe in in Walker Little. And maybe they don't. Graham, he's been here how many years? They've never said, he's our guy. He's had to earn it. Last He tried last year, didn't make it, came in, played fine, and of the year played even better. But they've never said, nah, he's our left tackle. I was about to say, that that feeds perfectly into what I was about to say, because you were you were just saying a minute ago, you gotta be you gotta be real damn confident that Walker's your guy if you let Cam leave. Yep. And man, between the end of last year. And all of camp and four games to start this year, the sample size is plenty big enough for Good you point. to know or not. Great point. You know? Yep. And we you and I have talked about this on the podcast a thousand times. Yep. We like Walker Little. It's a pro Walker Little podcast. Oh yeah. But damn it, man, take the job. Take it. Leave no doubt. Right. Leave no I, I understand the politics make it difficult because they paid Cam a lot of money a couple years ago, and it's I, I get all that. Yeah. But go in there and be so damn good that it is not an option to move you from that spot. Right. Say, this is my spot. Yep. No one can take it from me. I'm the best left tackle on this team, and it's not even close. Right. Go in there and do that. Do it. Cam Robinson already struggled in one of the preseason games. He yep. got bullied two oh, weeks he ago did. He against did. the Lions. He did. The Lions beat him up pretty good. That's, but he, he bounced back. That's a ch- He did. Yep. But that, that game is a little chink in his armor. Four game suspension, chinking his armor. Right. Uh, ACL tear last year, chinking it. Man, Walker Little, you have none of these problems. No, right. Go take the yeah. job. And just so, look, and I know people are like, well, why would they play Cam so much? Just so you know, because they used to tell us, like, that just shows he could play to the rest of the league. Of course. Like they want they don't they don't want him on the sideline if they're thinking of moving him. They want him out on the field to show that hey, this guy's still got the goods. You I got need, you should come and grab him. I need 31 teams to think that he's Jonathan Ogden. Right. I, right. I need them to think that right. he's So sitting him isn't the way to do it. Just so I know people are They like, need well, to think he's Baselli. So That's why. <laughs> right. Right. They need to think that this guy yeah. is like you know, a premium and look, yep. look at how much Jawan Taylor got paid in the offseason. Yep. Teams, no, right, right. Teams will pay an arm and a leg no for doubt. solid tackles. Yep. You know, it's another thing with Walker, too. Like, if you, okay, let me throw this at you. We've been around camp. We've been around this team all camp, right? You more than me. And I've been around a lot. Anybody raving about Walker at left guard and Cam at left tackle? Anybody going, wow, oh, I can't wait for that to happen? Anybody? Nobody. Uh, now Walker did a nice job at guard. He did uh, against Detroit, and 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 uh, Doug pointed that out. But nobody's raving about him at guard. I don't know if they're raving about him at tackle. So that's going to be an interesting one. I feel like you hear more positive news of him at tackle than you do guard. It, he's had a really good camp. Look, I mean, he he has he has a. He has I watched a him camp. a lot of one on ones. Walker Little and he was shutting down our top guys. Granted, I don't know how top they are, but they're top on our team, and he was shutting them down. He was handling them pretty, pretty easy, not easily, but pretty decently. And here's the thing, man. Those first four games, week two in particular, there's a man by the name of Chris Jones yeah. that will be in Jacksonville, Florida. He may or may not be. That's true. Right? He but, may be holding out. But under under the assumption that a man by the name of Chris Jones, he wears number 95, I believe. Yep. For the Kansas City Chiefs, he's pretty damn good at football. Yeah, shut his ass down. Yeah, right. Do it. Right. Shut his ass. Do it. Yep. You're at home. Yep. It's week two. You've had a great camp. Yep. 
Cam Robinson suspended. It's your job. We yeah. know we know you're going to be the left tackle those first four games. That's yep. without question. Without question. What, Just take man, it over, man. No time like the present, it's bro. It's the eye of the tiger. <laughs> <laughs> well, why did oh, yeah. why, when did Baselli become Baselli? Not right away. No, but, not right away. But when when did everyone realize that Baselli was? One of the best tackles in the game. First time he took the field against the Green Bay Packers, he shut down Sean Jones. That's and a that premier name, after, is it not? What's that? That's a premier name. Oh, yeah, he was one of the best pass rushers in the game. Correct. And Tony just came off his knee. And the only reason he said no, he wasn't, because his old line mates will tell that he was pretty mean coming out of USC, but Mike Mazur made him even more nasty. Like, yeah, oh yeah. really, like, man, you are the best. You need to prove it every time. And he did. First game out against Green Bay, he shut down John Jones. And something that made, something that, that also made Baselli so good is if you could, when he was playing, if you could ask him how he would prefer to, the schedule to play out. Yeah. But let's say he was playing in, in today's game. He'd want to play Von Miller one week and Bradley Chubb the next week. Yeah, I mean, no, no And problem. Chandler Jones the yeah. next, or Chris yeah. Jones the next yeah. week. Yeah. He'd be Trent Williams. He'd want to play every He'd single... He'd be Trent. Him and Trent would be like the top two tackles in the game. He'd want to play right a now. premier edge rusher every single week. Absolutely. Walker Little needs to be that way. I agree. He, he needs to be... Li- I mean, obviously, I go out in week one and show out. Yep. But we, he needs to be licking his he, chops and, week two. And, and, like, again, he's gotten better. He has. He's gotten better left tackle for sure. So I, I feel good about him. I do. I, I The injury is the injury, whatever. I think it's minor. He'll be fine. Um... But again, he's had opportunities. So, because right now he's won by what? Kind of by default. Default, yeah. Kind of, you know. He still had to perform well, which he has. But he, everyone knows, Cam's out of here for four games. So he knows he's the guy for the most part. And we wish him nothing but the best. And I do think he's he's got a little more aggressive. His look, his athleticism is ridiculous. It, it he. Walker Little has the physical tools to be a dominant left tackle, without question, in my opinion. Like a top five tackle without, in football. Without yeah. question. He is that big. He's that strong. He's that quick. He's that flexible. He's great at recovery. Great. And part of the reason— Everything in phys- from a physical standpoint. Part of the reason tackles get paid the way they do is it's a little bit like quarterback in terms of— those premier guys, man, that do have those physical tools, there's not many of them. No, right. Walking around, they don't grow on trees, no, man. they don't. Typically, guys don't. with the size like Walker Little are a little slower. Right. They're a little clunky. Yep. Fast Clumsy. edge rushers can get right around them. They, right. And Walker Little has everything physically you want. He does. And he's pretty technically sound. There's a couple things that have been his yep. kind of his Achilles heel since yep. he's gotten in the league that he has improved on. At least I, I don't really know offensive line play, but from what I've been told, I'll tell you. I'll tell you the biggest culprit is they duck their head. They think they got to use their head to stop the guy, and the minute you put your head down is the minute he's around. It happens to a lot of linemen. It's that and not being patient. Got you. Got to be like that snake. I always say, right? You get in your stance, you get square, you get balanced, and then kapow, you're coming at him like a big hit, like a snake to stone his ass. But if you do it too quick, right? You do yeah. it too quick. You got to. You got to. You can't reach out and grab. Got to sit there and wait. It's like a box. You wait, you wait, bam. You know, it's got to be like that. But we, hey, listen, I, I trust in, in, in Phil Rosher. I do. He's going to get the line just where it needs to be. And I think play call will come into effect. And I think we're going to have an outstanding offense. I really do. Uh, cut day is a tough day. There's no doubt about that. If you would look real quick to see if any new cuts before we, we uh, <clears throat> get off. The air, excuse me. Look around the NFL real quick. I was talking about it on Facebook, but I want to get it on the podcast. Um, Kyle Murray is going to start the Cardinals uh, season on the pup list. All I'm going to say, look, whoever decided to pay that young man should never have a job again. What a terrible – why you would give your quarterback who doesn't prepare – who doesn't study, who doesn't put in the time, a extension worth $190 million guaranteed. That is asinine. That is absurd. He can run around. He's very athletic. He can throw the ball. I get it. But he has done nothing as a starting quarterback in this league, except maybe one year he looked okay. But, man, what just – and then he's on pup, and then you get rid of Colt. 
Like I said earlier on Facebook, it's like an episode of Stranger Things down there in Arizona. I don't know what they're doing. I kind of know what they're doing. But uh, nonetheless, I, I just, hey, good for Kyle. I mean, 190 mil for being below average. It's pretty darn good, I guess. He won't have to worry about it. Matt Stafford's wife comes out publicly and says her old hus- old ass husband can't relate to the young kids on his team today, the wide receivers. Uh, right when I read that, I was like, oh, Mrs. Stafford. What's her name? Kelly, I think. I think it's Kelly. Come on. You can't say that publicly. You just can't. I mean, who, every... who hears that and says, man, I need to tell the world this? No, I know. Or <laughs> like, like the young players, what do you think they're thinking? They're like, oh, now we're calling them gramps, of course. You know, right, now, we're, right. now I'm getting after them. Like, what? I don't know. But uh, listen, I, I think Matt Stafford, he's been one of my favorite players in the league. I just think he's a tough dude and, and has had a great career. We'll see how it goes this year. And finally, um, Eagles defensive end Derek Barnett seeking a trade. Interesting, huh? Do we need a guy like him? One of the heroes of their 2017 yeah. Super Bowl. No, he can rush a passer now. He's 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 got. And he some forced goods, that fumble man. on Brady in that Super Bowl. Yeah, that's end, right. Remember? He did. That's right. He did. He uh, he's uh, he's he can get it. He can get after it. We'll see. I don't know. I don't know if they're going to ask or anything. Would we even look? I tell you, um, it sounds like Chason's our third guy. I mean, you know what? I look. I trust the Doug. I I gotta. I don't. I don't. Nobody sees anything uh, now. Granted, <laughs> nobody sees anything. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't mean it that bad, but I mean you don't really. He doesn't really do anything. But I don't get it. But <laughs> I trust he. Heath, Heath Farwell says he's a core four guy. He's one of my best core four guys. And athletically, what I say about special teams, athletic and attitude. If he's got both of those, he's he is very athletic. He should be. A hell of a player. I don't. I'll tell you. I just don't, look again. I'm sorry. You good? Why they've tried to change him into something he's not? I'll never understand. He should never, ever, ever have been an edge rusher. Ever. Not even when when the old regime was here. They made him play four three DN. He was never that. He was never a natural pass rusher. You thought just because he was a bigger guy with athleticism that he was just all of a sudden going to be this pass rusher. And that's where the NFL sometimes makes the big mistake. They just think, no, I can make him into something. Now, look, I haven't watched every snap, and I got nothing against the kid. I'm glad he's here. You know, if they think he's got the goods, then I I trust. I got to trust. I trust everything else. I got to trust in it. But I haven't seen any. There's. There's nothing to go on where you're like, oh, yeah, now I see it. Have you? Has anybody watched the game and be like, ooh, Kate LeVon has finally figured it out? Maybe they have. Maybe they just see like he's right there. And maybe he is. And that would be great if he if he is. It would be awesome if all of a sudden, snap, crackle, pop, Chase Sons getting after the quarterback. But – I think that's wishful thinking, but again, they know more than I do. They're smarter than me. I'm just, I just can't get out of my head when Lagerman said on the radio during the Lions game, if yeah. anyone jumps off sides here, they should be cut immediately. Yeah. And immediately 45 <laughs> he jumps, jumps off sides. He jumps. Also, well. I'll tell you, he, uh, I don't know if he has lived up to his Twitter name, uh, Sat Guru. That's but, his Twitter name? Yeah, it's Sat Guru. <laughs> But that is Caleb, what are you doing? Come on, man. Oh but my um gosh. he is one of the best sack celebrators I've ever seen. When other people make a sack, he's right there to celebrate with him. He's a good teammate. Sack he's a good guru. teammate. But. That's like what's his name? Doing the fly eagle fly after one touchdown in the preseason. No, Anthony Richardson. AR, what are you doing? I, I mean, seriously. We had a guy our first year on his license plate, playmaker. Never made the team. <laughs> I can't remember. He's a nice guy. He's a real nice guy. But I was like, dude, I mean, you got to. Hey, LeVon should change his Twitter name to Offsides. <laughs> <laughs> or just Four Core ST. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. I Listen, I, I'm, not, like, I'm not trying to beat the guy down. But, hey, again, if they think he's got the goods, then I hope he's got the goods. And <coughs> we shall see if that. Uh, 
that comes to uh, comes to light. All right, more cuts coming in. You didn't see any new ones? They will be coming in. Uh, let's just remind you. Let's see. Uh, Derek Parrish, maybe a practice squad guy. Uh, Nathan Rourke, Jordan Smith. I, I never saw that Jordan Smith. I don't know. I, I just never saw anything uh, special about that. I saw some people up in arms that they kept Chase on and cut Jordan Smith. I mean, yeah. not, not that I'm... Chase On's a way better athlete than Jordan Smith. Yeah, we just talked about this. We, he we, is. N- not that either of us think Chase On is exactly Nick Bosa, yeah. but like, what what did what did Jordan Smith show? What? He had a couple pressures or a sack, but no, yeah, I know. But I mean, he's not a natural, and, and I think his leg is still not not full. To, well, to the he, point... He of, looks when, like he favors it a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. To the point of when we were talking about Elijah Cooks, how he's like jumped off the page and made you think, that guy's got to stay. Right. Jordan Smith never did anything like that. No. No. He hasn't. But, I mean... He hasn't. And he's had, now, he's had plenty of opportunity. Right. I know he got hurt last year, but he's had plenty of opportunity. No, I know. So and then compare that and to like Jeremiah Ledbetter. Right? He's shown that he could play. Oh my God, yeah. Right? Uh, Caleb Johnson. I've been talking about him for a few weeks now. He makes plays. He's, you said it earlier. Eric Hallett has made plays. Eric Hallett. He's made plays. You can't. You can't deny that. Um, uh, Abdullah. Abdullah has made he a ton not? Of plays, has he not? I mean, this is what I'm talking about when I talk about the eye test. It's not rocket science. You can see it. You. It doesn't. You don't have to be like this genius to figure out whether a guy makes plays or not. You either make them or you don't make them. The only position where you kind of need to be a little more in depth and yeah. maybe watching something is is offensive line and defensive backfield because you never know if there's a mix up yeah. in coverage. I but, agree but, with you. On, but on you're that. right for the most part. It, when you watch the game, do you hear the guy's name called or do you forget he's on the field? Right. Is he around the ball? Is he making plays? Is he shutting down the guy in front of him? You know, you see, Abdullah looks so he's a, he's a really good like he's a natural athlete. He is. Like he yeah. he doesn't look like he's struggling ever. He'll be number three before you know it. Oh, I, bet I, I think yeah. uh, easily. They're just not going to hand it to him. And look, it, it, first round pick, Jason is. You want something to happen? And again, if they see it, I know we're joking around, but then I got to trust that they see something. Let's just hope that it. We see it, like we're just talking about. And who wouldn't want to come on? I know I would. I know you would too, Grammage. If he makes plays, we're gonna tout, we're gonna tout 100%. him. We'll be like, man, awesome! So glad that he's finally figured this out. I would no love about. nothing more to than be yep. proven wrong and have him rub this entire thing in my face. No I would doubt. Love it. No doubt. Please. Absolutely. All right, that's gonna do it for this time around. Hey, make sure you check out all the great. Sponsors on Team Tommy Mac. I love having them all. The Truck Accident Law Firm, Azar Sausage, River Bend Ranch Meat 55, uh, Chris Lucero's Bail Bonds, J Dog Junk Removal and Hauling, and the Carpet Man. We got room for more. 1010 XL. Love it all, man. Love representing everybody out there and love doing this show. Um, I will not, I'm, I'm heading up north Friday. Taking my number two Kelsey girl to uh, CLI at Dance Conservatory School up in Massachusetts, about two hours outside of Boston. I'm driving a trailer up. Wish me luck. Um, that'll be fun. You know, be good times. <laughs> Twenty hour ride, and but I'm gonna do catching up from the road on Friday. I don't know where yet, but it'll be somewhere cool, and we'll talk about the Jags. And uh, I, I I don't know if I can announce this yet, but I will anyway. Um, I agreed to uh, being a co-host for Jags pregame when the Jags travel. Mia and Hayes do that early morning one, 8 to 10. I'm going to be joining them when the Jags are on the road. So that'll be cool. I look forward to that. All right. I just agreed to that yesterday. I forgot to tell you. That's cool. Yeah, man. Looking forward to that. All right. Y'all have a great day out there. And until next time, stay safe, be cool, and we'll see you right here on Catching Up with Tommy Mack. Peace.